Antonio Sock who's having Chris Hopper here with the wrap up of week 22 of the MLS season. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed our video last week from Southwest Preparatory School Studios. Uh, that's something we're looking to continue in the future, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, it was a shorter week this week in the MLS thanks to the international date and in the middle of the week. And things got started in Seattle as a day hosted Shivas USA, whose racist policies towards Mexicans or in favour of Mexicans, has led to them missing out on Freddie Adu. Both teams trying to get settled early. Shivas USA were forced into an early sub as Braun came on from Monday High, and it was a tight first half. Both teams are really failing to test the opposition's keeper and the Sounders, just about edging the half to the sides once the break scoreless. Seattle controlled the early stages of the second half, but yet again failed to test Kennedy in the Shivas goal. The misses proved an issue for the Sounders as Shivas Sounders come into the match in the last 25 minutes. Pace really stepped up in the final 15 minutes, becoming an intent to counter, but ultimately it was a game of missed chances for Seattle as the match ended scoreless. Toronto FC managed a crucial win as they welcomed Real Salt Lake to BMO Field, recording a 1-0 win. Toronto started the match well with a number of chances in the first 10 minutes, with Winter's 3-4-3 change, which allows more possession in his midfield than his usual 4-3-3, seeming to work. Milas Kosic starred for Toronto seeing goals, filling in for Fry, and making a number of important saves, denying Rails or Lake despite their repeated attacks. Potter scored the game winner in the 77th minute as his cross ended up curling inside the post for a 1-0 win. A desperately unlucky night. Rail Salt Lake. Columbus Crew yet again came from behind in the second half to run out 3-1 winners over the New England Revolution. In truth, it was a dominant performance from the crew, and the New England goal came as something of a surprise right before the break. As Fail Harbor had space at the edge of his area at the edge of the area to pick his spot and score a well-placed goal. It was an own goal that got Columbus on level terms as Alston stuck out his foot to stop Mendoza's cross, only to see it sail over Rice and into the back of the net. The Rose almost struck back just a few minutes later as Alston strike came off the bar and Columbus took the lead in the 75th minute thanks to Julius James before Retoria put the icing on the cake in the 81st minute. Another solid second half performance from the Columbus crew. Season win 3 1. DC United sent a strong message to the Eastern Conference this week as they demolished Vancouver 4 0. DC United dominated the early stages, but struggled to really test the keeper, allowing Vancouver a chance to get back into the match as they pushed hard in the final 15 minutes. It wasn't a bit as DC United took the lead just before the break as De Rosario got past Demerit and found Pontius for the opener. Two minutes left to half time, it was two as De Rosario managed to fake Nolly, allowing Nehar to surprise the keeper with his shot. Vancouver tried desperately pushing for a goal, but that allowed DC United space and they attacked on the counter, making it three as Pontius redirected King's effort. Goal difference could be crucial in the East, and so DC United kept hunting King, turning goal scorer as De Rosario drew the defence to him, leaving King open, who easily slotted the ball past Norway. A solid 4 0 win for DC United. New York continued their horror show as they had yet another time with the Chicago Fire. It's the 26th time. The ever-changing New York franchise has split the points with the Chicago Fire. And things were looking good for New York early on as they took the lead in just the ninth minute after Richard's back pass was gathered by Henri, slotting home from 20 yards. But the lead was short lived Chicago equalising just eight minutes later as Dominic Oduro equalised from a counter-attack. Nayaka was able to send the ball across the face of goal, finding Oduro who scored with a deft tap. And it didn't take long for Chicago to take the lead, as Grazzini scored his first ever goal in the MLS as Papa sent Nayaka through on goal. Nayaka's shot was saved, only to fall right to the path of a great for Grazzini. And it took until the 63rd minute for New York to finally break through, denying Chicago their third win of the season as Dane Richards and Lynn Pair lined up, linked up well for Lynn Pair to hit a smart shot past the keeper. The draw means New York have now gone 11 straight matches without a win, and the Axe must surely now be hovering over back his head. It was an exciting game in Philadelphia as FC Dallas took on the Union and it was in Dallas who took an early lead. As they pounced on a clear, missed clearance by Valdez, lifted the ball over the keeper and into the back of the net. George John was caught napping by Justin Mapp as he broke the offside trap being brought down by Himalu for a penalty. The two slotted home the goal come to be right before halftime. Dallas took their lead back and who else could it be but Breck Shea tapping in Chavez's rebound. George John made his second mistake of the night in the 80th minute, getting his second yellow card and putting Dallas's lead in trouble with just 10 minutes to go. 
in the end, Philadelphia's pressure told as Dallas gave away yet another penalty. Perhaps a tight call as to whether it was in the box. But Latou slotted home the penalty to Savage Point. An unlucky end for FC Dallas as they head into a busy few weeks with uh, Champions League duty Philadelphia penalising FC Dallas for giving away two penalties and winning themselves a 2-2 draw. Colorado in good form mode their way out to San Jose for the last match on Saturday night. It was the champions who took control early. And we're unlucky not to open the score in the seventh minute after a pinpoint cross from Mullen was met with a good header from Fulan, only to come off the base of the post. For all of Colorado's early dominance, it was San Jose who grabbed the opening goal. Through Yurtsen getting his first goal of the season, following up the initial shot well and being able to head into an empty net. The goal woke up the earthquakes as they came more and more into the match, but Colorado put an end to that as they got back on level terms just before the half. And that was through Caleb Fulan's penalty. After Cronin's hit, well, disaster struck for San Jose as Cronin was sent off just after the break, as he left his foot in on a challenge from a, on Nostroni in what initially looked like a 50-50 challenge. The red card sp really sparked this one up as the challenges started flying in, and surprisingly San Jose controlled the next few minutes, determined to get a goal despite their disadvantage. Colorado finally took the lead with 20 minutes remaining. San Jose gave away a free kick on the edge of the area, and it was the Reds who scored the game-leading goal. Drew Moore was perhaps lucky to escape with a yellow card after slapping Yurtson's face in the 78th minute. San Jose desperately tried to equalise, but it wasn't to be, as Colorado ran out 2-1 winners. It was a crucial battle for playoff places at Robertson Stadium as the Dynamo welcomed the Portland Timbers, the first time good friends Dominic Kinnear and John Spencer, who of course worked together at the Houston Dynamo, squared off. The Timbers tested the Dynamo early, but it was the Dynamo who opened the scoring thanks to a former Timber, Adam Moffat, scoring his first goal to the, for the Dynamo with a wonder strike after Bobby Roswell's attempt after a corner was blocked. Brad Davis put himself back to the top of the assist innings with 11 to finding Clark, who nutmegged former Dynamo Lovell Palmer and fed Brian Shing, sending a comfortable strike past Perkins to make it 2-0 before the half-hour mark. Timbers came out firing in the second half, and if not for some brilliant goalkeeping from Tally Hall, they may have had a goal early in the half. It was Zizo who set up Portland's goal with a good cross to the far post, finding Nagbe, who in turn set up Jewsbury to score with a powerful finish that deflected off Heinel on the way in. Portland pushed hard for an equaliser, but it wasn't to be as the Dynamo managed a crucial victory. 2-1. So week 23 sees a number of teams facing schedule congestion as the Champions League group stages get underway. And uh, next week I'll be reporting from pitch side at the Houston Dynamo vs. Real Salt Lake match next week, so stay tuned for that. And as always, be sure to visit examiner.com, the internet source for the local. See you in week 23.